over the past five years, we've seen God moving amongst people who've been involved in Momentum Conference. We've seen uh, lives being transformed. We've seen young people getting to believe in what God has called them to do. Well, um, when you talk about Momentum Africa, uh, you know, I've just realized it will not just take one church to do it. It will take we as a church, as a Christian body called by Christ to actually change the world. What is the potential for momentum? We cannot imagine uh, uh, because of uh, the launch pad, uh, first of the, the people who are behind it, faithful men and women um, in a local church who are saying, we are behind you. Um, and I think the potential is, is, is unimaginable for it in, in Nairobi, uh, in Kenya, in East Africa, and across uh, the, the continent. I think one of my best experiences with Momentum is being able to gather all the young people together and be able to just minister to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, just having various people from every walks of life, different nations, different races coming together, you know, to just walk in this vision of Momentum Africa to become change agents of, 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 of the world, you know. And I think that for me has been such a joy. I love the journey that the Lord has taken us through the past five years. And we are hopeful and believing for what God is about to do this year in 2020. God has given us a platform that is unique than other previous years to stand together on one digital platform and to reach out to as many people as we can. And our theme is undefiled. And we are believing for young people to gather together and challenge one another to live lives that are full of integrity and to live, to live lives that are glorifying God. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 says, But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself in this way. Uh, the context of this verse is where uh, the children of Israel have been taken into captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar, and they have been taken into the king's palace and uh, the king selects a very uh, special group of young people, uh, young men, uh, who are, been, uh, are to be trained in the ways of the Babylonians. And they are brought into the king's palace. They are offered the best food that is available that the king himself uh, uh, eats. And uh, they are offered that opportunity to sit at the king's table and to eat with the king. There is nothing greater than that. And so when Daniel is offered this food together with his friends who have been taken from, uh, from Israel, they recognize that eating this food would be uh, something that would defile them because the food that was being offered here had already been offered to idols. And so they realize that if they eat this food that has been offered to idols, it's like allowing Jehovah, the God of Israel, to bow to the God of the Babylonians. And so because of their faith and because of their conviction, they decide they are not going to partake of this food. First of all, when we read this story, and especially chapter one, we always tend to forget that there are other people there. I want to read for us Daniel chapter one, verse six. It says, now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. What am I trying to say is that in this undefiled journey, the truth is we don't live in isolation. We live among people. These four gentlemen that we read about were among other children.
Now, you are among other people, be it at school, be it at your workplace, be it in your neighborhood and community, even in your nation. You don't live in isolation. So one of the things you will need to really know about this undefiled journey is number one, you live among other people. The whole idea of, of being in the world and not of the world, of, of ultimately uh, realizing that my job is to symbolize Jesus and to be a representative to him. So to not take on the, the, practice and the practices and the ways the world around me operates, uh, instead using who I am as a Christian to, to break that cycle, to be the difference, to be different to the world around me. When I was in high school, I had a dream. My dream was to get to campus. I had this idea of campus, this place where serious people meet and we do nothing but study, fight for the library space, fight to hand in cuts on time and to discuss academic work. How naive. When I got there, I saw another face of campus that I don't want to share. And then when I was in campus, I thought, I want to get to the marketplace to serve my country, to serve my nation, to serve humanity. I thought we would be in boardrooms discussing GDP and per capita income and how to revolutionize the economy of our country and ultimately the economy of the world. How naive. I found people who had more passion, bigger passion for Friday than for Monday. And that is where we have actually defied ourselves. Because of our insecurities, because of our fears, we have chosen to have other gods. And these gods, some of them are power, money, having a name that we feel will be a name that will influence people. But God tells us the first thing we should have is Him. Not ourselves, not our friends, not anything that is created. And that is the first point of defilement. We can see defilement, the defilement that is taking all around us. We have the electric media that is bringing other gods to us, that is trying to influence, influence us to do things against the word of God. We have uh, the, 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 the issue of the parents, uh, where the, the Bible says we should honor our parents. More and more, uh, people are no longer really listening to, to, to authority or to the parents, and therefore they are just defiling themselves. The Bible tells us issues of adultery and fornication. It is all around us, be it in social media, be it in the books we read, and again, We've done a lot of defilement around that area. The Bible tells us not to steal. We see stealing all around. In our governments and in the private sector, there's corruption. Young people seem to also be getting into these things and we begin to see that money being lost, be it at a, a lower level in organizations, in companies. And that kind of defilement where we are actually taking things that don't belong to us. Context almost similar to the one that uh, Daniel and his Jewish friends found themselves in. Particularly for those of us who are believers, those of us who are Christians, we find ourselves in a situation where the world, if we take the world now as Babylon, uh, is offering us so many things that sometimes are contrary to our morals, contrary to our culture, contrary to our faith, contrary to the things that we believe are right. And so we are faced with that situation where we have to make a choice whether we we'll go with the standards that we have known from times past or go with that which is being offered to us today. And so the very challenge that faced uh, Daniel and his other colleagues from, uh, from Israel is what is facing us today. In terms of the media industry um, and content production, I suppose what's ended up happening is uh, people follow the trajectory of culture or pop culture and what's happened I've seen over the years is as we've tried to embrace more and more of what's cool, we've watered down specifically from a Christian perspective, the gospel or we've tried to make stuff more kind of like uh, seeker friendly, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I do think there's a distinct difference between something being uh, easily accessible and easy to watch, but also not communicating the gospel. I 
think we need to stay true to to what it is that uh, we believe and what it is that we're trying to do and achieve as uh, people in the media industry. Um, and this is very, very important, especially even in our time today, uh, when the media is just, uh, you know, throwing all these things at us that are actually a lot of the times contradictory for the word of God. And the more the thing about appetite is, the more we feed on something, the more appetite we have for it. And if we have more appetite for the things of this world. Um, it means that we will be governed by that and it means that our thought process, our worldview, everything will be you know, conformed to that. And before we know it, the things that we believe, the things that we stand for, the things that we stand against, are actually contradictory to what we believe as you know, Christians, or contradictory to what the Word of God says. Um, and the thing is, again, it's not necessarily that Netflix is bad or you know, Instagram or Facebook is bad, but um, Unless we control our appetite that we have for it, then if we're fully um, indulging ourselves um, through that, through those mediums, then we are being overtaken by their content. You're supposed to do exams and you're not really sure how you fare on. So the first exam comes and you do your best, you don't copy and you still fail. And somebody who has copied is the one who will pass. So you ask yourself, is all this worth it? Like, should I? like do the exams without coping or should I follow them and copy at the end of it all? After all, see degree na kwanga harambe. I used to have a passion and I still do have it. But due to some factors, I was not able to pursue it. And that was soccer. The amount of corruption it, uh, that is there in this, this, in this industry. Um, for you, no matter how good you are, for you to venture, for you to play soccer in a big club, you have to bribe someone. So there's a lot of competition in um, creation of content per se, for lack of a better word, between us, born again Christians, and the rest of the world. If you look at the content that the other people are placing out there, it is uh, so attractive, so wanting, and so we are left uh, to ask ourselves, what content will we create if i create as a digital content creator if i create content concerning christians will people really look at my content will people really view my youtube channel my tiktok channel uh, because it is termed as uh, let's say boring so when i talk generally about kenyans without coming first to the christians is that the choice that we have today is uh whether we will follow our values as a society or follow the values of the world, most of it which is imported, most of it which is brought to us from an external world that really has been destroyed. Right now there has been a big debate on the issues of uh, abortion, homosexuality. Uh, we have to deal with issues of dressing and how we conduct ourselves in the public space all these things are coming upon us and sometimes it looks like it is uh, more modern, more advanced when we engage in some of them and you look backwards, you look like you have been left out uh, if you follow the uh, ordinary standards of our Kenyan values. When it comes to Christians, it gets even worse because the Bible has very clear standards on how a Christian should live his life. Uh, very clear standards on how we should conduct ourselves in the public space, how we should conduct ourselves in the private space. But the pressure that is upon us is that everybody is doing it. And so, because everybody is doing it, we also feel the pressure to do the same. So, Skuzi Unapataga, unajua kuna a very qualified leader mwenye anezawali dumbele vipua, anezawali improvement kwa life zenyu and all that. But because of tribalism, nepotism, whateverism, mutapatia the wrong guy. The votes. Alafsa zine kamehanza kukua kabaya, mwanza kusema, oh, gava idu hivi, idu hivi, na nyinyo nyeo nda mkukublemu. The effects are too many, you know, um, when there is a lot of people who defile themselves, um, there is a lot of effects, but one big one that I feel like I really want to address is basically uh, when the society loses trust 
in the ministers of the gospel because musicians, worship leaders, singers, uh, all the gospel artists were all ministers at the end of the day, we're ministers. So when our words don't weigh anything in the society anymore, when our songs are just entertainment, they don't mean anything. So for me, uh, when you, when people lose trust in you, when people lose that confidence of actually feeling ministered by your songs, by your music, by your life, then uh, you are you are done. You know. The human person has five senses: the sense of touch, the sense of smell, the sense of sight, the sense of sound, and which is the third, or the fifth one, the, the sense of hearing. These five senses are your point of either remaining pure or being defiled. You are defiled by what you see. And if you do not make a choice, like uh, Lot said, not Lot, but Job said, that I have made a covenant with my eyes that I will not look at a woman. That is just one of them. It's not only women uh, that we look at. But what do you look at? What do you watch? What kind of movies do you watch? What kind of uh, programs do you watch? What kind of things do you watch? Just the eyes. So if you want to remain pure, make a covenant with your eyes. The things that you watch, the things that you look at. Number two, what you touch, the things that you touch will have an impact on your life as a person. And the things that you hear, the kind of music you listen to, uh, all these things, those are the entry points, as, as it were, they are the five doors that are through which defilement will come into your system. So if you are to remain pure, to pure uh, check your five senses, your sense of touch, your sense of smell, your sense of, uh, of uh, hearing, your sense of uh, sight, and your sense of hearing. All these senses have to be monitored so that you are only following the things that bring uh, edification to your life. Uh, Paul talks to the Philippians in the Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, which I think I should just read for us, because for me I find it a great standard for knowing what to do and what to do. He says this in Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. God calls us to repent, to go back to him. And that first commandment is very important. One, just realizing that we've been saved, that we've been cleaned, and there's nothing we can do that actually can, we can say because we do this, it will, it will make us to be right before God. But it's that call of realizing that we only have one God, and that God loves us. And when we turn to Him, and when we live in fear of Him, He receives us back. He forgives us, and He walks with us. And the most important thing is that turning away from going to the wrong direction of being God ourselves and allowing God to be God. I just want to call out anyone who might have been defiling themselves. The Bible says that it's never too late. You can always, you can always hear his voice knocking on your heart, saying, open so I can enter. And if you repent from your sin and let God come in and be the king of your heart, then uh, we can all uh, advance the kingdom of God. Wherever you find yourself, whatever it is that you're doing, just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons and that you're doing it to glorify Him. Don't ever be ashamed of, of what you believe or who you are. Um, but yeah, always always put your best foot forward, produce the best work. Um, ultimately, we serve a God who His very nature is to create. So as we go about creating, let's do so in the same spirit that He has. And um, yeah, yeah, God, do amazing things, produce amazing content, uh, be unique. Don't follow the world. Yeah, just be absolutely awesome. I want to bring to your attention Mwalim Julius Nyerere. He was the first president of Tanzania. And during his time, it is said that there were no parties 
in state house, dirty parties, dirty politics discussed in state house, or orgies done in state house. It was a clean place. And this is what he said. He said, Kama mtu akona ukabila wake, asilete ukabila kwa ikulu. Kama mtu akona ufisadi wake, asilete ufisadi ikulu. Kama mtu ni mwizi, asilete mwizi wake ikulu. And then he said, ikulu ni mahali patakati. Today I want to ask you, what is your ikulu? Where is your ikulu? The Bible tells us that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Today, choose to be undefined. Musicians, producers, people who belong to the music industry, I want to ask you to be undefined, to stand and be counted. I have chosen, and the story of Daniel is one that inspires us in that um, aspect. Be undefined. There are lucrative delicacies around you in whatever industry you belong to. When you're in the office and people are sharing the proceeds, of a corruption deal that they made, please choose to be undefined and not share in those delicacies. Choose like Daniel to stand and say, I will be undefined. Today I choose and I say, Ikulu ni mahali Okay? And defilement makes you stand out. It makes you stand out. That's another result of undefilement. You see, they chose not to do like the other people. But guess what? After a couple of days, the results were there. They were fairer. They looked much, much better than their counterparts. They looked admirable compared to the people who walked into this place with them. So that's another result of undefilement. I always love to tell people that when people sit down, I want to be the person standing. When everybody is standing, I want to be that person who stands stands out. And everybody, when everybody is standing out, I want to be the standard. And I really feel this is what Daniel and his friends did due to undefinement. They set standards. This is not only a call for Kenyans, but it is a call for every person who's all over Africa. Momentum is for Africa. And Africans, it's our time to rise up. It's our time to take our space. And it's our time to take our stand and to see what God is doing through us, through our local churches, to the different parts of the world. Hey, 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 niyaji wa se? Mkofiti? Ay, nataka ivo. Sasawa. One of the most staggering thing is Daniel refused to take the king's wine because like Hillsong, in the crushing and in the pressing, God was making him a new wine. And three years was not enough time to betray the author of time. So the clock ticked, but his loyalty was not tricked. So on the side of God he kicked. In him, God had a vision. There was no television back then, but he was doing God's business. And as a citizen of his, of his kingdom, he kept him on the program even when they threw him in the lion's den. He did not need followers on Instagram to, pro to prove his worth. Like Jeremiah, God, kept him, God knew him before his birth. So with confidence and precision, he kicked on. Kama Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even when things get thicker on the highway, upate kisirani kasarani, sometimes God hata a zima man, atawacha moto iwake to prove that he is the only one and his truth will burn. The burden is heavy and the road is narrow. Ana lift weight yako na will barrow. Na kama master builder, ana jenga faith yako. Deep, hadi kwa bone maru. Ana kujenga, jupengine anata kutumia face yako kwa hii nation, ndo mana na apply foundation. Hata kama hakuna mtu anaku like kwa page yako, kumbuka God ameku post kwa palm zake na reaction yake ni love. Usi tense, jua kuna mtu na capacity ya kukujudge, tembea na confidence ni kama God amekupea love sentence. Ka ka wangare, ka miti na wangare madhai ukweka west ama gedhurai kuinspired na wadi yake no matter the calamity. 
there's power in a name ukiangalia kwa kina Daniel alikataa kuchange jina juu ya papasi ya God walikuwa kama vina so Nebuchadnezzar angemchezea game hata akiwa kwa prime yake kama minister hakuwa overtaken na fame pesa anasa ama madem alikonona the bigger picture so he kicked on ali stick to the process hata kama king ali stick to the process hata kama king alikuwa na beef na yeye jua kula matunda alijua Mungu yuko saa hawezi dunda plan ya god ni tailor made na iko na material jua after 10 days alishona na king's council walikuwa lighter so between the two in approve word ya god ni heavier so in spite ya, in spite ya temptations of babylon ali kick on hata alikuwa na character hata alikata kula nyama na wakubwa kama king the king of kings ndo mkubwa kuwa na imani buda julion of juda hata kama kuna unyama kwa hii dunia anaweza pitisha masai imara masai imara so on god's side continue to kick on because in truth that's where you belong hi everybody I'm glad that you've been able to join us for this year's edition of Momentum. Our focus in the Momentum conference is to engage young people and help them to use their creative gifts, their careers, their social positions, businesses and digital media as God intends. You know, finding their own place fulfilling the their God-given purposes and bringing glory to our God. If you are under 35 years old, This is specifically for you. And if you are over 35 years, you and and you want to, you know, make your life your life to make a true difference, a real and God-directed impact in the world, then this is for you. Do you remember Caleb? You know, when he was 85 years old, he told Joshua, "I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out and to battle as I was then." That's in Joshua 15. You know, 85, but he wasn't burnt out. He wasn't, you know, settling for a quiet and uneventful life. He was ready to step forward to step into the destiny and fulfill the promise that God had given him way back when to take the land for the Lord. Is that you? Then this is for you. Momentum is for you. This year our theme is undefiled and we will be looking the, at the example of Daniel who was one of the great leaders of the bible now we call daniel a prophet many people call him a prophet because of his book and because that book is in the bible but you read it and what you'll find is is a professional civil servant who's been rising up the ranks um within this huge empire to the very top of the administration The first half of the book really is about this and 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 Daniel's journey uh, in in his career and it's only in the second half that we start to see him putting down the visions that God had given to him relating to the future. He was not a preacher. He was a civil servant and in him, you know, we we see a man who worked in the in in you know in a highly corrupt society under constant pressure you know to and threat from the politics of that time he was always you know in in a situation where he was he had a faith that nobody could understand nobody could understand what he was practicing and yet he stood and he didn't just stand he stood out he was a shining light um within that country he rose to the very top of the civil service he served under three different kings and yet never ever did he compromise he was undefiled a man who stood out and shining in the world undefiled you know daniel never let go of his focus on god he was not con- he was not defiled concerning his religion and and worship of god he was always always centered on him despite amazing pressure and the threats on their lives he was not defiled by corruption and even as a man who rose to the very top he was not defiled by power even at the very top in fact in daniel 6 the bible tells us now daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and satraps 
by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to send to set him over the whole kingdom at this the administration and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against daniel in his conduct of government affairs but they were unable to do so they could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent finally these men said we will never find any basis for charges against this man daniel unless it has something to do with the law of his god now stop and think about that guys were were jealous of him these were guys that were jealous of him people who were competing with him for the next promotion they clearly had it out against daniel yet they could find no way to point a finger at him but what they could clearly see was an undivided loyalty to god do you know that through daniel's life you know three kings of babylon that daniel served kings of the world superpower of that time ended up admitting that daniel's god really is god You know, this was a pagan empire. They had other gods. They had their own gods. But through the lives of Daniel and some of his friends, we have we have these guys recognizing that this god of of, of this little place called or called Israel, a place that they had you know crushed in war, that they were stepping on, that that that, that they were in total control over, small little place, that that god, the god of that place, is God. And then in chapter six, we have. King Darius from the Medo-Persian Empire which had just conquered the empire of Babylon and he too confesses that Daniel's god is god that guys is a powerful life a powerful life and all of this amazing success as a leader and as a servant of god starts with his resolution really at the beginning um of 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 the book of Daniel as a young young man and 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 it's our theme verse in in for the, for this whole thing of momentum for this year Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 the bible says but Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself you know at that point he was he was probably a teenager you know he had been chosen to join a special 3 year program um you know in literature and, and and the arts to prepare him for a possible career in the civil service of of the Babylonian empire you know it was like he was a fresher in university and he makes the choice right there you know the verse continues he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine he drank you know food and drink that's the that's a choice at that stage in life uh, maybe in our time also sex and 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 other things at that stage of life he was making those choices later on we see him having to take tough choices other tough choices and and being ready to pay a price you know he and his friends were called to pay really high prices because of that decision not to defile himself you know and that decision carried him through his entire life he stood in that way and his life guys had deep impact he had a great career a career full of integrity and on top of that a great testimony for god You know everybody could see that his life was centered around this 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 god that they couldn't understand and the result is that even his bosses emperors the guys at the top saw the glory of god this is a man that was a true ambassador for god who engaged the world in his time not just to prove himself but to serve his god and his life shows us the power of a choice you know the choice to be undefiled how powerful it can be to be a holy vessel that is set apart for for serving God fully centered on God in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20 uh, the bible says now in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver but also of wood and clay some for honorable use some for dishonorable therefore if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable he will be a vessel for honorable use set apart as holy useful to the master of the house ready for every good work that's what daniel was 
you know, we'll be speaking so much more about, about, about him on Sunday during the sermon. So I'd like to invite you to join us on that day um, and, and, and just see what we can learn from the life of this, of this man, a life that was so powerful. There's so much that we can pick up from his example. But people, God wants to work through you through you specifically. His plan and destiny for you is to have a deep impact through your life as you serve Him. The Bible says that He has prepared works in advance specifically for you that you might live in them. You know, sometimes think, people think that the only way that we can serve God is through doing like what I'm doing, you know, speaking, preaching, um, doing evangelism. But like Daniel we can be a people who serve God with true impact through our careers, through our careers, and also all the other areas of our lives, every other sphere of life, we can make a difference serving God. You know, that passage that I read, 1 Timothy chapter 1, chapter, I mean, 2 Timothy 2, 20 and 21, it tells us something that I'd really like to ask you to think about as we walk through this process of 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 momentum and thinking about being undefiled. Paul writes about articles of different materials, gold, silver, wood, and clay. But I wonder whether you notice that it wasn't, it isn't about the type of article, the type of material that made that article that makes that article stand out as important. In verse 21, it says, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. It's not, it's not whether it's made of gold or wood or clay that makes it special. It's not, it's not your IQ or your qualifications or, or your family or whatever else you might be thinking about, you know, that, that, that you need to have. That you, those, would be, those things are shiny in our eyes. But that's not what makes you special for your master. The secret is your choice. The secret of your value to your maker, your achievements um, for his work, your opportunity to fulfill your destiny, the one that you were made for, is that choice. To cleanse yourself from whatever is dishonorable, whatever may be dishonorable in your life. I don't know, I don't know what, what, what is dishonorable in, in, in your life. I don't know what that might be. But probably if you would pause and think about it and honestly reflect, you know. And for sure God, God knows. Cleanse yourself. You know, the beauty is that God has given us the means for cleansing ourselves and it's in the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, so, so please just turn to him, confess and repent. And, and by the way, repentance is that very making of, of a choice. It's making of that choice that, that you will choose a new path and you won't go back to those dishonorable ways. You will, you will choose to, to walk in, in, in the honorable and cleansed ways that God wants you to walk. In the blood of Jesus, we find cleansing. And after we've been washed, then we make the choice to be separated, to be set apart for God, you know, for special use only for God's use only. That's what holiness is. And then you'll be ready for truly special purpose and destiny. The one that you were created for in God. God's plan and purpose for you will be fulfilled. A life of true depth and impact. You know, Daniel resolved not to defile himself. That choice, that choice is a difference maker. Please make that choice today. And then stay with us for the rest, the rest of, this, of, this, of the events and the, and, and, and the conference of this weekend. And God will, will work in you, in me, in our lives together for His good. Um, for, for your good, sorry. For your good and for His glory. Undefiled. That's the call. May the Lord help you and I as undefiled vessels live for His glory and make powerful impact like Daniel did. God bless you so much. Welcome to Momentum 2020.
I want to start by reading Revelation chapter 4. I won't read the whole of it, I'll just start from verse 6. The Bible says, Also before the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even, even under his wings. Day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne and lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before him, before the throne and say, You are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by, by your will they were created and have their being. I want to invite you to worship with us today to rise wherever you are, or to just get seated or whatever you want to do, but to join us in this session of just worshipping Him who is holy, holy, holy.
indeed you are holy. You are worthy of all praise. And we are here to just do nothing but to worship you, O oh Lord. And to sing out your praises and to declare that you are holy. I just want to invite you to lift up your voice and glorify this King who sits upon the throne, who shines with glory and with power. Come on, just join us and pray. Lift up your voice wherever you are. It doesn't matter what is around you. It doesn't matter who's around you. Lift up a shout of worship to the one who deserves it. He deserves all glory. Come on, somebody, just lift it up to Him. Give it all to the King of Kings who deserves it. He has kept you until right now. Give it all to Him. Yes, Lord, I'm
Yes, Lord, indeed you are holy. There is no one who compares to you. Only you deserve the praise. It's only you who deserve the worship and the adoration. And Father Lord, we thank you for giving us an opportunity to just be in your presence, to hear you speak to us, to seek you, O oh God, and to hear you, O oh Lord. We pray that even as we begin this conference, as we continue with this conference, that God, you would speak to your children. We pray that you would stir up our hearts, O oh God, to live lives that are undefiled, O oh God. We pray that every single day you will make us aware of the fact that you go with us, you hold our hands, O oh God, and that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us, and that you see us, you see the depths of our hearts. I pray that with every waking day, O oh Lord, you will stir up our hearts to walk in your ways, to walk in your will, O oh God. I want to pray for every single person who's watching us right now, O oh Lord, and I pray that, Lord, you may minister to them wherever they are, O oh God that you would cause them to desire to walk with you, that you would cause them to desire to walk a life that is undefiled. I pray for that person who's watching us and they don't know you, Lord. I pray that you speak to them right now, that you minister to their hearts right now, oh God, that they may be totally surrendered to you, oh Lord. I pray that they may see your light, oh God, and choose to walk in it. Please, God, go with us. Journey with us, oh Lord. This we pray living and trusting in your holy name. Amen. Takatifu, takatifu, na kuita takatifu, oh yes. This session has touched your heart and you have decided to live a life that is undefiled. I want to welcome you today as we say a word of prayer, as we are gathered here, I'd like to invite you just take some time and reflect upon what we have had today and even as we pray. I'd like everyone, where you're at home, wherever you are, we stand together in prayer because the Bible says if we confess our sins one to another, he is faithful and just to forgive. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts open wide, ready to receive. We have experienced your word. We have experienced your presence and we have heard from you. And Lord, today we come before you asking that you may help us to live a life that is undefiled because that is what you have called us to do as Christians. And at times we get to fall but you have given us the strength to stand. And today, Lord, for some of us who have decided to make that decision to accept you, O oh God, we celebrate together in heaven. And for those of us who are Christians and we have decided, we at times we fall, but you have given us the strength to stand. We ask that you may be with us, O oh God. May you bring people around us so that we may be able to live a life that is worthy before you, God. This evening, we just want to worship you and experience you. And Lord, help us. For those of us who have made a decision, help us, oh God, and walk with us in this journey. I want to pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you're among those people who have decided to make a decision to follow Christ today, kindly take time and respond in our DMs. You can put your name and your phone number and one of our pastors will be able to reach you. Amen.
amen and amen today being momentum africa 2020 day one i hope you've experienced an amazing time seeing all these people talking from everywhere around africa i'm hoping that you've had an amazing time and guess what we have day two for you tomorrow so lined up is a panel discussion happening tomorrow so kindly actually before we we continue please make sure you take your phone or whatever an alarm clock tomorrow 8 p.m kindly put an alarm so that you access this on all our social media platforms and guess what we have an amazing panelist we have one david Kuria, richard jao and an amazing sylvia Mulinge. kindly welcome them as we are going to talk about digital media creative governance business and entrepreneurship see you tomorrow Bye,